Or does you, you figure that uh, Latham will get a shot at left tackle, or is he strictly a right tackle? Just there? out the gate with the with the what right position away. is he going to play? <laughs> yes, we're going to start him uh, at left tackle. Um, you know, he's he's played right tackle at, at Bama. I know he's practiced at left tackle. He's taken reps there, so it's not foreign to him. Um, but yeah, you know, he's he's going to start off at left for us. Uh, I, there's a precedent. I mean, guys have guys have played right and played left and, and made the switch. It's um, it's not super uncommon. I mean, it's it's happened before. So we got a comfort level with the with the player and the athlete and what he's capable of. And so having him go to left and, and start out there and look if he doesn't feel comfortable there, it doesn't look right and look natural. Move him back to right. Um, and like I said the other day, you need tackles. Period. So uh, it doesn't really affect us one way or the other. Which tackle is the, which ta which tackle he plays? So um, he's just a really strong, powerful, big, athletic human. There's not a lot of guys that look like him on earth. So um, we like that. Doesn't it affect you in that you don't have a left tackle? So if, if he goes if he goes back to right, doesn't it? You say it doesn't affect you one way or the other. If he's playing on the right, you still don't have a left tackle, no? Correct. We have guys on the roster that we like. Um, we have there's there's we're not done adding players if we feel like we need to find someone somewhere else. Um, it's just part of the process, and we, we picked the best tackle that we felt like was available to us. And like I said, whether he plays right or left uh, remains to be seen, but we're going to start him at left. And we mentioned it uh, We mentioned it um, when we spoke uh, earlier this week, Paul, about you know we're, we're getting through this draft. We're going to draft the people where we pick, but that doesn't mean player acquisition's over. So we're going to continue to look to improve just the whole roster as a whole. And like I said, I have all the confidence in the world in the kid that he's going to figure it out um, just because of his makeup, you know, who he is as a human, who he is as an athlete, who he is as a football player. But we're going to always look to continue to add to our roster. You feel like the starting caliber left tackles available on the market after the draft? Yeah, there are a ton of guys on the street that have played, you know, a ton of ball um, that, that are available to us. But like Coach said, we have guys on our roster that we like. We have guys that we're excited to work with that, you know, we just met, uh, I think it was the night before last, just, you know, getting Coach Bill's, um, his thoughts on the guys that he's working with. And he's excited about working with some of these guys and playing them along. And if you know his track record, no matter what position is your primary position, you're going to learn you know, other positions. I mean, if you look back to even last year, Nick Petit had primarily been a right tackle, you know, here for us. And in the spur of the moment, he kicked over and, you know, and played left for us. And so all that versatility helps us. What was his feedback on, uh, on Latham? One more time. What was his feedback, Bill Callahan's feedback on, on Latham, or you know, his analysis of him going in? I mean, liked him a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just he's got, he's, he's big, he, he's powerful. Uh, he's a he's a really good athlete for his size. He's got gigantic hands. He's got great anchor. Um, there's there's a lot of things that he has that not a lot of people have uh, with his combination of size and athletic ability. Um, so those things, as an offensive line coach, you get excited about, and um, those are all the things that, that he really liked about him. When you get when you guys meet him, shake his hand. <laughs> That's a challenge. Had to trade him back, did you pursue that at all? Was that no? We had we had a, a ton of calls, um, and I'm looking up at the screen now, and you know, seeing Minnesota trade, you know, up a spot. But uh, you know, we had calls. Um, but as we were sitting there, we were looking at the board, and like I said, we've worked through this. We knew who who was going to be available to us when we picked, and so we made the pick, and we just let those teams know that you know, unless it was an offer that was going to blow us away, um, it wasn't worth you know making the move. A pretty good sense what the Chargers were going to do at five. Yeah, I mean we we study this like it isn't you know draft season didn't just start this week you know and so um, we've had a we had a really good sense of what what this top I would say the top sixteen you know would be doing um, you know above and below us so we can you know position ourselves and so we had a pretty good feel for how yeah. it was going to go. It sounds like he was one of the guys on your do not trade away from list. If there was such a list, he was on it. <laughs> You talked so much about the depth at offensive line. Did that give you any pause about 
taken this early or waiting, or was it always kind of if one of these guys is there, you want them? No, I mean, again, it's about the way you, you grade the players and how you see them and how you – so uh, we talked about it earlier, the, the vertical board, the horizontal board, um, but we also went through and just ranked, you know, our top 100, our top 50, so we'll know, you know, how we have guys positioned. And so when you have a player of that caliber, caliber that's available to you, you know, at seven, and it's not worth the risk of, of hoping – someone else would be there because you're not in control of who's going to come up and who's going to, you know, take who. And so we, we felt comfortable with where we were to make the, uh, the pick. Kind of like the same thing last year with, with Peter. You know, he was a part of that that group of guys that we would thought would be available within those four picks, and he was available for us, and so we made the pick. Brian, what was your conversation with JC like about the idea of moving left? How enthusiastic is he about it? What kind of confidence did he express? Oh, very. He, he's – he sees himself as a as a left tackle. I mean, they all do, um, <laughs> <laughs> but he he felt like that's that's the way that it happened at Alabama. They they were trying to get their best five, and he was comfortable moving and playing on the right side. He was a left tackle in high school, um, so that that part of it he almost expected it, you know, uh, which is the attitude you, you want guys to have. I think he uh, possesses the requisite traits to do it, and. Um, there's not going to be too many guys that are going to turn down a chance to play on the left side either. They, they all think they can do it. So uh, I think he's fully capable of it. What are the most important traits he's got to show you as a, as a left tackle as opposed to a right tackle? Really, it's all, this, it's all the same traits. Um, it's just a matter of now you're, you're just switching the stance and you're, and you're kicking a different way. Um, that's really the, the, the crux of it is how comfortable can you be switching your stance and moving a different direction uh, versus one that you've repped quite a bit over over your time so uh, it'll be a comfort thing uh, for him more than anything else and for us and but he, he he presents all the traits that you want in a tackle and right or left he can he's got the traits to do either one um, and that part of it I think is, is exciting and I think he feels the same way which it's always good when a guy wants to prove that they can do the thing that uh, you're asking them to do. Yeah, you're a lot invested from he, left tackle to, to center at this point. You got a big time free agent, two first round picks. How excited are you to see how dominant that group needs to be for you? Um, I'm super excited. Um, super excited to get these, you know, get these rookies now. You know, whenever we're allowed to to get these guys on the field with the vets, our vets have been putting in some unbelievable work. Um, and just seeing those guys, even during the mini camp, just seeing all those guys in there together, it was you know pretty cool thing to see. And and we talked about it, like adding this this rookie class once we're done to that. You know, I'm excited to get all those guys out there on the field, and now you know get coach back to doing what he loves to do, which is coaching ball. What about the physical and powerful type of guy? At least that's what the scouting reports have said about him. For his size, how is his athleticism? Because that'll be a key in left tackle. Yeah, fantastic. I mean, he's. There, like I said, there's not many people uh, that walk the earth that are at his height and weight and can move at his fluidity. Um, he's a really unique, unique player, and That's which is fine. which is why he gets picked in, in the you know top seven picks of the draft. And um, I'm just I can't wait to get him out there. I mean, he makes us a, a, a physically imposing you know really left side of our offensive line when you put in with Peter and Cush and those guys, and we've. We've kind of taken some nice steps into really improving that unit. I, I know the penalties were, were an issue for him. Do you go over that with him? Is it footwork? What were the things that you saw? With him? Oh, it depends on what they are. I mean, there's there's unforced errors, which, you know, those are easily fixable. Um, holding calls, things like that, that's usually a technique issue. Um, those things are very fixable. I don't worry too much about that. I mean. The Jerry C had a lot of penalties too. It didn't bother me any either. So, um, just the way it is, part of the game. But you can you can fix you can fix a lot. Uh, you can fix a lot of technique issued things. And sometimes you don't have any control over a, a particular flag. But uh, I don't I don't have any res reservations about that. Question for both. What you mentioned, Brand, you mentioned the challenge of shaking his hand. But overall, just what's he like as a guy? What would people get to want to see about him getting known? I would say, you know, he's a fun-loving, you know, person. If you, when you first see him, when he first walks into this room, I think tomorrow, uh, right, Robbie, tomorrow, um, you're going to see this large human. And then you have to come to, to the thought that he's just 21 years old. So he's like the typical 21-year-old. He's fun. You know, he's got jokes. 
Um, he's just going to be a fun-loving dude. He's going to fit into our locker room seamlessly. He loves playing football, which is a, a huge part of it too. So uh, holds himself to a high standard, takes a lot of pride playing at Alabama, doing the things that they've done. And, and I think that that part of it is exciting too, that he's a guy that is willing to do all the things you need him to do to be a great player. And he's got a chance to be a great player. Now, Rand, does the board dictate, uh, does what unfolds in front of you dictate what you're able to do tomorrow? There are obviously a lot of talented people left at other positions that, that you need, but uh, I imagine who comes off dictates what you can do for me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we're sitting, uh, once we get up, I'm looking over the shoulder now, just seeing who Minnesota picked, uh, kind of playing it all in my head of who's going to be available. But, um, you know, we, we came in with a targeted plan. Um, we should have some guys available to us that we like, that we figure uh, should be there. But of course, as this thing shakes, you know, there's going to be a couple surprises as we get to the back end of guys being taken that you may or may not have accounted for. So we'll, we'll play the board, um, but we, we have some, you know, some targeted guys that, we, that we'd like to see there at 38. Player or a couple of players that JC reminds you of traits-wise? The ones that block their man. <laughs> is the best answer I could give you. Yeah, I don't. Um, love, I don't love comparing at this point. Um, we'll let him. Let him. Let JC be him, and we'll hopefully compare other people to him. Is he ahead as a pass blocker or a run blocker at this stage? Yeah, I mean those guys are really well coached coming out of, out of, out of Alabama. Um, good coaches there. Good scheme. Pro systems. Pro technique. Pro coaches. Um, so yeah, I think he's he's in a really good spot. Uh, there's not a lot of things about him. Not that he doesn't have areas to improve. Everybody does, but he has the he has a background and requisite fundamental background that I think will translate to him being able to have a, a pretty nice immediate impact for us. How tempting was it to take a receiver? I remember Kelly you talked a lot about liking the guys who scored touchdowns. Sure. But what was it about him that, that convinced you to maybe go this way instead of? You know, he was he was he was when you look at how we have these guys stacked. Um, you know, the next best player for us. And we're at a point where we went out and signed a receiver that I think is going to really complement our, our group well. And, and you got Hop, who's been a productive player for a long time. Uh, and so felt like if we can keep our quarterback on his feet, um, we're going to have a better chance to get those guys the ball. And uh, for where we are now and what we needed, those, that, that was a perfect fit.